My wife and I went to Auckland to pick up family that had been overseas and we went into the, um, the waiting lounge to wait for the arrival um, and all of a sudden I had to go. My pants were filling up, it was coming out, um, there was crap going everywhere and I got into the cubicle and um, it just kept coming uh, all over the toilet, up the walls, uh, all up my back, my shirt. Um, everywhere and oh, it was just a nightmare. I had to wash myself with the toilet water, um, took, a, took ages, cleaned my clothes and got back into the arrivals area just in time for the family to arrive. My name is Pete Warren. I live in Wangarei, Northland. I'm 71 years old and I have ulcerated colitis. And during all that time of uh, living with the disease, um, trying to understand the disease, uh, seeking support, trying to get people to understand how it was for, for me, um, running businesses, trying to maintain um, the right way of running business, trying to keep all your clients happy. I had up to 1,700 clients at times, and that in itself was a challenge. So it, it struck me like it knocked me over. I, I just was flattened by it. And we really, after, I mean, I really, really tried hard to, to live with it, to, to continue with being in business, but it just got too much and uh, we just had to make changes, get out of the businesses and uh, move on. You forget about what normal is, um, because normal is now living with this disease that we, we really strive to overcome. Normality has changed from, from what life was to what life is, and it's a real challenge in living with this disease. And, and worse is that nobody understands it except yourselves. That you can only, only those that have it understand what it's all about. I have felt like um, wanting to talk to people, wanting to be understood something that we all kind of want. Us that have got the disease, for sure. Um, people just don't understand, don't want to know. Yeah, we all want normality. We want to be part of society. We want to be part of everything. Um, this condition certainly isolates, isolates us from a lot of those um, things. And yeah, yeah, it hurts. It hurts at times that you have to miss out on certain things. That hurts, yeah. I just did what you do when you're at uni and partied and didn't look after myself. I was in and out of A&E probably every second month. Diarrhea, vomiting, um, blood and mucus in my poo. It's affected my personal relationships significantly. Um, I separated from my husband. I've got twin girls and they came to see me and I had to get them to leave the room because I couldn't handle it. And you think it can't get any worse than before, but it does, it always gets worse every time. I literally wanted to take my own life. I didn't want to be in that position for one more minute.
I'm Hannah and I'm 40 and I've had Crohn's disease for half my life. I remember when my ex-husband said to me, um, you should be used to this by now, Hannah. You know, you should be used to going to hospital. And I was like, fuck you. You never get used to this. You never once get used to having to go to hospital or lying on your toilet floor being so sick and then trying to look after your children and then being having to go to hospital. You just don't get used to it. It gets worse, not better. I was told I needed to have surgery because the drugs no longer worked. Um, leading into surgery, it was horrific. My mental health was so bad. My marriage had just broken up. I had two four-year-old little girls who depended on me. I spent five nights in HDU where the nurses um, had to clean me up and it was literally the most embarrassing thing I've ever gone through and that is where um, when my children came to see me I just I just couldn't even see them and at that point I felt like a shit mum, I felt like a failure and I just wanted it to all end. It's, it's really hard and people don't get it <laughs> Um, I don't get the support that I think that I should get. And when you have two beautiful little girls but you, you still don't want to live anymore, it's um, pretty shit. safe to say these two little four-year-old girls saved your life? Yeah, they save my life every day. They're pretty cool. I was walking home alone from school. I got a feeling something bad was going to happen, but I didn't know where and when it was going to happen. So I kind of started walking faster, trying to make it on time, trying to find the keys in my pocket, and then realised the keys were inside and I was locked out. And then I started crying because I was quite scared and I was like, what am I going to do? So I tried looking for a, a bucket or something to use. I was getting very desperate, um, but there, was, there wasn't anything. I just needed to get out the back. Even before I was over the fence, it was in the stones on the driveway and dripping down me and in my shoes and in my socks. I'm Charlotte, I'm 15 and I have Crohn's. I was 11 when I first got Crohn's, but I was only diagnosed when I was 12. A big fear I do have is losing my bowel. If I got, if my bowel like, gets like any more like sick, and scarred, um, there's a big possibility that we might have to remove it altogether permanently. I feel like I'm 
I'm quite hard to take care of of myself by myself. So it'd be kind of hard to take care of kids as well. I worry about, you know, having a full future with someone, you know. It's a scary thing to do, you know, dating, you know, you're kind of putting your heart out and you have to be ready for it to be hurt, but also for it to be loved. When I'm on social media and I see people like that have um, gone to university and then now they've found partners and going and traveling, starting a family, I'm like, you know, I'm excited to do that, but you know, I'm also really nervous because I don't know if I'll find a guy who will like me, you know, with it. Like, because, you know, it's really, it's kind of a gross disease. It's like, you know, who wants to deal with someone like that, you know?